Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be continuing on Power Series, and we're going to be looking at some special cases where the result is either going to be zero or infinity for our Power Series, and we're going to see what happens in each of those cases. So the first one I have today is the series from n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. If you remember, there's two kinds of Power Series. There's the geometric and the ratio test. This is not geometric because of this n factorial in the denominator. So in other words, I'm going to use ratio test, which remember is the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of, for the numerator, it's the n plus 1 term, which ends up looking like this. And in the denominator, it's x to the n over n factorial. What I like to do from here is I like to multiply by the reciprocal to make it easier for myself. And I'm going to reduce some of these plus ones. Like for instance, x to the n plus one can really be written as x to the n times x to the first. And n plus one factorial can be written as n plus one times n factorial. And if you didn't know that, I recommend you memorize it because it is important and you'll save yourself some time on the test if you just memorize it. And then times the reciprocal of the denominator, meaning n factorial over x to the n close absolute value sign. So the n factorials cancel, the x to the n's cancel, and we just get the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x over n plus one. What I like to do at this point is pull the x out in front, and you're allowed to do that because the only thing that has to be in the limit is the n part, so the x can go out in front, but I have to keep the absolute value sign around it. And then still the limit as n goes to infinity of absolute value of 1 over n plus 1. Now you may notice this limit's just going to become 0 because infinity in the denominator it's going to become 0. And we get this result. This is that special case I was talking about. And the reason why it's so special is because remember that this just needs to be less than 1 in order to converge because anything times 0 is just 0. You get 0 less than 1 and so the answer is it always converges for any value of x. So what you write here for the interval of convergence, this is when you write negative infinity to positive infinity. And for the radius of convergence, you're just gonna write infinity for that as well. And that's what happens whenever you have a zero at the end of your ratio test. This is always the result. But now let's look at what happens when the opposite occurs, you get infinity. And the example I have is this. Series from n equals one to infinity of n plus one factorial times 2x plus 3 to the nth power. So once again, this is going to be a ratio test. This is definitely not geometric. So I'm going to do the same thing that we did a minute ago. Limit as n goes to infinity. Numerator is n plus 2 factorial now, because I have to add 1 for the ratio test, times 2x plus 3 to the n plus 1. And then that's divided by n plus 1 factorial times 2x plus 3 to the nth close absolute value sign. So then what I do from here is I need to reduce the numerator to get things to cancel. So that ends up looking like this. Numerator becomes quantity n plus two times n plus one factorial. I do not need to write it any more than that because now it just cancels with the n plus one factorial in the denominator. And continuing with the two x plus three, that's gonna be rewritten as two x plus three to the n times 2x plus 3 to the first, all divided by 2x plus 3 to the n, close absolute value. The 2x plus 3 to the n cancels, and I'm just left with this. Limit n goes to infinity, absolute value. The entire denominator is gone, which is great, and I'm just left with n plus 2 times 2x plus 3. Once again, I'm going to pull the x part out in front while keeping it in the absolute value and then limit n goes to infinity of absolute value of n plus two. As you can see here, now we get the opposite result where this is equal to infinity. So we have two x plus three times infinity. That has to be less than one. And obviously that's never gonna happen, except for one point. And that point is when this equals zero. So in other words, I gotta solve for zero here. That's my only chance of converging. So subtract three from both sides divide by two, x equals negative three halves. This is the only point of convergence. 
And you may be thinking, wait a minute, this is zero times infinity. This is an indeterminate form. Don't I have to do something with L'Hopital's rule or something? And the answer is no, because if I go back to my original problem and I just imagine myself plugging in negative three halves for the x, then this whole thing becomes zero, zero to the n is still zero, and n plus one is going towards infinity, yes, but anything times zero will just become zero. So the whole thing is zero, it's no longer indeterminate. So even if you don't agree with that explanation, I promise you, the interval of convergence is a single point for this one. The single point is negative three halves, and because it's a single point and not an interval, that's when you use curly brackets in math. And then the radius of convergence, you would say that is zero. That's what you say every time when you have something like this happening from your ratio test. And so yeah, that's basically all I wanted to say in this video. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.